there are a lot of unmet needs uh, for ablation of persistent atrial fibrillation. Uh, right now, the only things we know for sure are that the results with ablation in persistent atrial fibrillation are definitely worse than the results with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. So we've long had the belief that in addition to isolating the pulmonary veins, we also have to do additional substrate ablation. The problem is we don't know what that substrate is. Um, and that was the subject of uh, both trials that I've done in the past, as well as ongoing investigations by numerous people across the world. So the STAR-AF2 trial uh, was the largest trial ever to compare different strategies for persistent atrial fibrillation. And we were trying to answer the question, what is the additional substrate required on top of pulmonary vein isolation? So we compared three strategies. We looked at pulmonary vein isolation alone, and then we compared that to pulmonary vein isolation plus fractionated electrogram ablation and pulmonary vein isolation plus linear ablation. It was our expectation that the two additional strategies would actually perform better than PVI alone in this complex patient population. Uh, but actually, much to our surprise, we found that there was absolutely no difference between the three strategies. So I think uh, one of the important questions whenever you're taking a person with persistent atrial fibrillation to the lab is do you think this is a person that will respond to pulmonary vein isolation alone or do you think this is a patient who may need additional ablation? There are really no hard and fast rules about how to predict this. If we knew that for sure, then we wouldn't be having this interview. But I think when you look at patients who have shorter durations of atrial fibrillation, maybe three months instead of six or seven months or 12 months, if you look at patients with smaller left atrial sizes, uh, if you look at patients who have fewer comorbidities, if you look at patients who are new onset persistent atrial fibrillation, then these are all patients that may do pretty well with a PVI alone. Um, on the other hand, if you're dealing with patients with much longer lasting persistent atrial fibrillation, larger atrial sizes, multiple comorbidities, and even worse, demonstration of scar in the left atrium, then these are patients who are not going to do well. And whether or not you have to do additional ablation is still somewhat of an unanswered question. As you know, the STAR AF2 trial was published some time ago, uh, but we're continuing to look at new data from the trial. So uh, at this HRS, we're presenting the burden reduction that came out of STAR AF2. So if you look at the kaplan meyer success curves, which looked at time to first recurrence of 30 seconds, the success rates were about 50%, which doesn't sound all that impressive. Uh, but when we looked at the burden analysis, we found that there was over an 85% reduction in AF burden. And in fact, 84% of the patients post-ablation had an AF burden of less than 10%. And that's pretty impressive when you consider that about 80% of the patients before the ablation were continuously in atrial fibrillation for more than six months.